this week on the show, we have South African director, Taryn Lexton. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that if you see someone living their dream, it's a sign that it's possible for you too. The reality is when we see someone we admire having the things we want, whether it's your dream car, a beautiful home, money, or a great relationship, this is the universe's sign to show you it's possible for you to have those things as well. Anyone that attained anything they desired simply first had the belief it was possible before taking action to go after it. The only thing that separates you versus someone who is living their dream boils down to their mindset. Ask yourself, do I truly believe it's possible for me to have the things I want? If the answer is yes, then you're on the right track. If the answer is no, then begin today working on improving your self-concept by realizing that it's indeed possible for you. Remember, if someone else attained it, it paves the path for you having the ability to have it too, with the proper mindset, focus, and hard work. As Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes, the mind is the limit. As long as the mind can envision the fact that you can do something, you can do it, as long as you really believe 100%. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And fast forward, let's talk about Nomad. I know it's, uh, you just wrapped it up, so tell us uh, about it. Thank you, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a really interesting, unique project. There's just, I've never been able to find something similar. It's, uh, it's filmed on all seven continents. As far as we know, it's the only narrative project ever to film on all seven continents. It was filmed in 30 countries. Uh, it's an, an adventure romance. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a fictional story set in real environments. So there's no green screen, um, no sets, no lights. It's all real, um, real environments, real, you know, real elephants, real lions, real, you know, we're on the streets of India, we're in the pyramids of Egypt, we're in Antarctica. Um, and it's really just a spectacular, it's a very intimate movie that's set against a very spectacular backdrop. Wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. Next on the show, we have South African director, Taryn Lexton. Known for his unique visual aesthetic and thought-provoking storytelling, Taryn has now wrapped up production on his most ambitious film yet, Nomad. Filmed across 26 countries without the use of green screens and only two lead actors, the film features White Lotus actor Leo Woodall as the main character. One minute, 15 seconds. This is the toughest shot I've ever attempted to get. I mean, we'll adjust it. Good solar filter, out. It just connects people to the fact that we're on a giant blue orb hurtling through outer space. And when an eclipse lines up, you, you feel that. It's like the only way to feel that on Earth. Stay consistently wide. How often is it that people just fully stop what they're doing and take in a natural wonder simultaneously? I don't know, connects us all. Oh my God. <laughs> Taryn, thanks so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? It's my pleasure. I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing very well. I'm very excited to talk to you. This movie Nomad is, it looks incredible. But before we get into that, let's talk about, when did you develop a love for storytelling? Oh man, since I was a kid. I mean, I was basically raised on movies. I grew up in the 90s, so it was Jurassic Park, Forrest Gump, Braveheart, you know, Titanic, all the great ones. And, you know, it was like, they had such an effect on me that my hope and, and inspiration was if I could you know pass that on to the next generation if I could pay that forward so that's that's what inspires me you had me at Jurassic Park <laughs> it's my favorite movie so yeah no I can completely... it's a perfect movie yeah exactly and Taryn in 2004 you developed TXL films where you traveled over 55 countries and seven continents so what's it been like traveling all over the world 
It's, it's really amazing. I mean, uh, uh, you know, there's different ways to travel. You can go and you can really live in a particular country for a long time or get very uh, immersed in that culture. But I had a different experience. I was more like an astronaut. I was going country to country to country to country. So I had this, uh, astronauts call it the overview effect. And it's, you get this sense of humanity as a whole. And, um, and I just remember, you know, as a young kid, I was 12, 13, 14, traveling through all these countries. Um, with my mom, she ran a, a human rights organization um, and I was basically traveling with her, being her cameraman. And um, so I got to see all of these cultures and I just remember it, it really changed my worldview. Uh, and I realized how few people get the chance to see that much of the world and how profound it is really and how um, that, that sort of sense of humanity and connection. So my whole drive as a filmmaker was to try and you know, try and bring that to the screen somehow, try and capture that sense of the world as a whole and all of us and that connection, so. Yeah. Mm. I'm curious, what's your favorite country to travel to? Oh man, as a, as a tourist or a- As a tourist, as a, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, as a tourist, I would say Argentina. Oh, very Argentina nice. was amazing. Yeah, just so unexpected and the steak is so amazing. <laughs> Tasty. I wanna talk about, you know what, as in addition to being an amazing filmmaker, you also are involved in humanitarian work. I know you got an award from the United Nations. So tell us about that uh, amazing milestone. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that was I was 19 years old and um, had been working um, with my mom, actually, through my teen years, um, basically documenting her work. And then we, we created a video, uh, a music video promoting human rights and uh, the United Nations was generous enough to recognize it. They, they promoted it um, and they gave us an award. So that was a, a, a big honor for sure. And it was, a, was kind of a, that was a high bar to, to start at, you know, sort of, th then, I, then I started my career after that. <laughs> Very nice. And fast yeah. forward, let's talk about Nomad. I know it's, uh, you just wrapped it up. So tell us uh, about it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a really interesting, unique project. There's just I've never been able to find something similar. It's uh, it's filmed on all seven continents. As far as we know, it's the only narrative project ever to film on all seven continents. It was filmed in 30 countries. Uh, it's an, an adventure romance. Um, so it's a it's a it's a fictional story set in real environments. So there's no green screen. Um, no sets, no lights, it's all real, um, real environments, real, you know, real elephants, real lions, real, you know, we're on the streets of India, we're in the pyramids of Egypt, we're in Antarctica. Um, and it's really just a spectacular, it's a very intimate movie that's set against a very spectacular backdrop. Mm -hmm. And you're known for your incredible visual aesthetic in movies, as well as uh, provoking storytelling. So how do you kind of marry the two, especially with this movie Nomad? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because on a movie like Nomad, there's so little you can control because we go into these situations like we filmed, for example, with um, with some real tribes in Africa, some Maasai tribes and, and San tribes. And um, we go in there with a sense of the, the feeling we want to evoke, the scene we want to get, but a lot of it is sort of weaving it into the reality of what these people's lives are. They're, they're not actors. So uh, our two actors, Leo Woodall and Sana Sheikh, were amazing in their ability to sort of go into these uncontrolled situations and improvise with uh, you know real locals, sometimes with the wildlife, uh, and in you know scenarios where um, you know we pretty much just had to adapt to whatever the world threw at us. Um, so it was it was beautiful because so much was unexpected, so much was unpredicted. You know, um, I would say fully half of the footage we shot, uh, I never could have planned. Yeah. And um, the movie is so much richer for it. You know, so when you watch the movie, there's a very blurry line between reality and fiction. And when when is it a, a fictional moment, and when is this actually the actors experiencing something? You know, in the streets of India or in Africa or you know, any of these places. So it was a really, really a fascinating, cool experience. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and tell us about a little bit about the storyline of the movie. So it's, uh, we're keeping it a little bit under wraps, yeah. but I will tell you that it is uh, an adventure romance. It's about uh, our lead character uh, played by Leo Woodall. He has a condition, a very strange condition, which let's just say 
it it results in him being in all places at some point. So he he is he is ripped uh, across the world, and our our actress uh, Sana Sheikh ends up with him, uh, and they're sort of in a fight for survival it, at the absolute ends of the earth, and uh, not quite sure where they're going to go next. Yeah, and what was it about these two characters, Leo Waddell and Sanal Sheikh, um, that compelled you to cast them? Because I know that there's only two characters, main characters in this movie, and a very small production team that kind of traveled with them. So what was it about them that you felt was great for the storyline? Yeah, I mean, it, so much was riding on them because really yeah. it was two lead actors. We had eight crew, and so it was really just the 10, the 10 of us traveling to 30 countries, all seven continents. Yeah. And, um, and we actually did uh, a, a huge uh, casting call. Um, we cast for six months. Oh, wow. And we basically didn't want to sort of find a familiar face. We wanted to find new talent. And so we, we basically did an open call across six continents. I think it was 12 countries. And we got over 20,000 auditions in. Wow. And I remember it took months to watch all, those, all of those auditions. And I remember Sanaa's uh, audition rose to the fore. It was, she was a revelation. I was like, oh my goodness, who is this girl? She's incredible. Uh, she was from uh, Australia. And then when we saw Leo's audition come in from uh, from UK, I remember <laughs> all of us and you know all the all the women in the group. Uh, there was a certain energy that happened uh, in particular. Um, he's really incredible. And when we met him, just such a cool, um, easygoing, relaxed guy, and such a talent. And their chemistry together is is pretty incredible. So, um, yeah. So then they ended up being our leads and following us around the world. And I remember we we tried to scare people away because this is a real a real expedition. We actually went to these places. Yeah. We we went to Antarctica. We went to the Sahara Desert. We went to the jungles of South America. So, if someone was afraid of heights or afraid of bugs or afraid of you know uh, scrappy situations. We wanted them to not even apply. And um, and Leo and Sonny, I remember the more we would tell them, okay, you guys, we're going to be climbing cliffs. We're going to be, you know, on the edges of waterfalls. Like, are you okay with this? The more we try to scare them, the more excited they got. Um, they're just absolute superstars. So wow, um, really those, incredible. Those are true actors, right? They, <laughs> I mean, because this is like one of those projects that you can tell is raw. You know, there's no yes. visual effects. It's all real. So. I find it really interesting and I'm actually really interested to see Leo in this movie because I did have a chance to watch uh, White Lotus and he has a bad boy character in that so I'm interested to see him in this in a romance so it's uh, yeah. it's going to be interesting. It's a different spin. Sure. It's a different yeah. spin. It's it's definitely it's another dimension of Leo Woodall for sure. He's he's an amazing actor and I I I remember just being um, really really stunned by his ability to to get into character no matter what scenario we threw at him so sometimes it was a two or three hour hike through a jungle you know up a mountain just to get to the location and then he needed to get into character and deliver an amazing performance um you know on top of the expedition of just arriving to the set so this type of movie really it was a for any actor would be a herculean feat i mean just doing a, a feature film uh, as itself you know shooting for nine months um, relentlessly is a is a, a, a task and then you add on top of that the travel of going to 30 different countries and the expedition of getting to some of these locations that had yeah. never been filmed before some were only reachable by boat or by helicopter wow. or by hiking or climbing and um, and they would always get there always deliver amazing performances and sometimes they even helped us carry gear wow. so uh, yeah we were very very blown away by uh, by Leo and Sunny yeah, and I did have a chance to watch the promo video. I know it's confidential, so the public uh, yes. hasn't watched it, but I was <laughs> stunned by the visual effects. It's just so beautiful, and you could tell this is going to be a very epic movie. How does it feel to see, you know, the fruits of your labor manifest like this? Because I'm sure, you know, you kind of conceptualize it in your head, but to see it actually, you know, on the big screen, how does it feel? Yeah. It, it's especially on the big screen, yeah. I would say. I mean, it's, you know, because when you're filming it, obviously you see it in front of you, but the, the image on the camera is, you know, this big. Yeah. Um, so being able to actually see it on the big screen with the big sound um, with, you know, we filmed in IMAX. So we've got the same the Im image quality as Dune, 
Um, and uh, it's it's really it's really rewarding and gratifying, and especially seeing audiences be moved by the film and being swept up in it. Um, obviously, we put so much work into it. This is a very handcrafted, you know, sort of lovingly created independent film. Um, this was not a studio production. This is very much just a, a small band of guerrilla filmmakers getting in there and uh, and just weaving every moment of this, you know, loving, lovingly handcrafting every moment of this for the audience. And um, yeah, the response has been really incredible and overwhelming. And um, to see people, you know, laugh and cry and be moved and blown away and um, and say that they've never seen anything like this before uh, is really wonderful. I'm really thrilled. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you know, for, first of all, I want to say congratulations because I'm sure there was a level of risk that you had to take as a filmmaker and director to create, like, to put this on the big screen and to make it everything you thought it would be. So tell, tell us about that level of risk that you took and what made you take that leap to do it? That's a great question. I mean, that was a lot of why we did the project was um, to do something that would challenge us. Yeah. Um, as creative people, you know, you want to be engaged. You want to feel excited about what you're doing. And um, we had obviously done a lot of commercial work. We've done a, a lot of projects. We've done a, another feature film where we filmed in, in Italy, which was amazing and beautiful, where we had lights and we had equipment and cranes and all of this stuff. And we just wanted to to challenge ourselves in a in a different way. So using no lights, no green screen, no sets, you know, all real light, all real locations. Um, and really restricting ourselves to uh, you know a very kind of small production, only eight crew, and going with completely uh, new talent, you know, uh, uh, dis discovered talent. Um, it really just helped me and all of us to feel more engaged. It asks so much more of us as artists and filmmakers. We had to really come to set. There was no phoning it in. Uh, we had to be fully in the moment. And especially when you're dealing with moving sun, you're dealing with weather, you're dealing with, you know, real elements and wild animals. Um, and that that energy of the actor's engagement, our engagement, and that, that electric uh, sort of experience of making it, I think really comes through on the big screen. It comes through to the audience. So it's a different type of experience yeah. um, than maybe sort of a green screen, you know, yeah. CGI epic where everyone's, you know, acting excited, but they're really in an air conditioned <laughs> warehouse somewhere. Yeah. Um, what you're experiencing in this movie is us all basically going to the ends of the earth for real and capturing images that you know had never been captured before so it's really the end goal is to bring something onto the screen that's never been seen before you know contribute something back to a cinema that has given so much to us and um yeah and again just to see that really affect people is super gratifying yeah and especially growing up in the 90s you know movies had were based more on storytelling before and the actual storyline so i like that and now you know People use green screens, a lot of CGI, so it's nice to see a movie kind of going back to the raw essence of storytelling and the, right. you're not using any green screens, so I think that's uh, incredibly cool. And you know, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, to, to showcase that anything is possible. So I want to ask you, you know, I'm sure there were a lot of challenges when creating this movie, as with any success story. So what are some challenges that you went through and how did you get through it? What, what pushed you through those hard times? Yeah, it's really just that that bigger goal, that bigger vision of trying to make something uh, beautiful and meaningful. You know, like I said, you know, we we were raised by the great movies uh, that came before us, and we stand on the shoulders of giants. And so, I don't want to just be a consumer of great cinema. I want to add something uh, to that world. And I think it's a it's a really you know, movies are something that add to people's lives and really help make life better. And they help us deal with life and situations in life. So, you know, it means it means a lot. It's not just just entertainment. Um, so when it when it gets tough and you're out there and I mean, in our case, when there's a, you know, a dinosaur sized mosquitoes coming at you or venomous snakes or rhinos or lions, it's, um, you know, you sort of keep in mind why we're doing this and what this means to us. And, um, and at the end of the day, it's really, you're, you're taking a leap of faith, hoping that it will come out uh, anywhere close to what you're envisioning. And, and fortunately in this case, um, we felt really good that, you know, we, um, we 
we got it. You know, we, we went out there to the ends of the earth to capture something beautiful, and we really feel like we accomplished that. So it was something we're really proud of and can't wait to share with people. Yeah, and speaking about taking risks, what advice would you have for someone that maybe has the big dream or a vision in their mind, but is scared to take that leap of faith? Yeah, I would say do not give up. I mean, it's just the old, you know, it's tried and true, but I will say it's, it's easy to say, but it's harder to do. Um, and just really keeping in mind, I would say you've got to find your passion. You've got to find your purpose. You've got to find that thing that lights you up. And then you've got to commit to that and stay committed to it. Um, th this for me was, a, you know, it's, it's a huge movie, but it was very, very personal. This is something that I've been feeling for a long time. This sense of humanity, this how do we capture the world? How do we connect people? to the humanity uh, all around them that maybe seems so far away, maybe so disconnected. Um, how do we kind of bring that to everyone? And, um, and so that was something that lit me up. And in the hard times when we were <laughs> fighting heat and cold and exhaustion and uh, you know, plane flight after plane flight after plane flight, um, you know, reconnecting with that and reminding myself of why, what this means to me and what I'm trying to accomplish. That was everything and and you know and then beyond that i would say find your people you know really surround yourself with people who get what you're doing who support you and that you support them um and they can come from the most unlikely of places i mean like i said we have you know people from from all over the world working on this movie we had hundreds of of local artists and, and craftsmen and, and crew and everyone uh collaborating on this but everyone came uh came up behind the vision of let's make something that that can that brings humanity together uh and you know having that purpose that passion and constantly clarifying that and keeping it in your mind i think that's i think that's just got to be everything yeah i think that's great advice is you know when you're passionate about something you will find a way to make it happen no matter what right and you also the universe opens doors for you you find people that want to help you right on your journey yes. because you're so committed to it and you're passionate and it's something that lights you up you find people join you along your journey right so i like that have the end in mind and keep going i think that's great advice for absolutely. our viewers absolutely <laughs> and what a great message for your platform and for your show it's Thank really you. really amazing so congratulations yeah, I, I'm very passionate about inspiration. It's something that uh, I feel like I manifested my show because I wanted it so badly, I made it happen. So I'm like, I need to teach this to everybody so that they can manifest their dreams and goals. So I, I like Absolutely. that. <laughs> I love that. No, I think everybody's got something special. And I yeah. think some people will get caught into the, the cog wheels of some, someone else's dream yeah. and uh, forget why, you know, why, why they're here, why they're doing this. And I think finding your own why, your own purpose what lights you up, what energizes you, and really, you know, bringing your life closer and closer to being able to do that is really what it's all about. Yeah, and of course, sticking to it, right? Even, you know, yeah. with our industry, it comes with a lot of rejection, a lot yes. of no's, but I think yes. that if you really have that drive, you're, and you have that self-belief, you'll keep going no matter what, and you'll look back and you'll be like, you know what, I'm glad those no's happened because that's what creates resilience, right? And, and pushing that's the envelope great. like this movie, that's, uh, that's what makes it exciting as the creative, right? To push the envelope, to not be complacent and to keep growing. So congratulations, yeah. Terrence, by the way. This is a very exciting movie and I'm very excited to, to watch it. And for our viewers that wanna watch it all over the world, when, they, when can they expect it to come out and watch this movie? Very soon, very soon. Don't have a release date yet, but, uh, but as, as soon, we're in the final stages of post-production right now, wrapping it up. And uh, like I said, we're starting to share it with people, with audiences. And um, yeah, so very soon. Very nice. Well, thank you yeah. so much, Taryn, for being on the show today. I'm very excited to watch this movie and uh, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Can't wait to share it. Thanks so much for having me. PAC TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.